Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel, Essential Endeavors, where we are finding the essentials together. If you're new here, I am a part-time reseller working towards becoming a little bit more full-time, and I primarily resell clothing and shoes for men, women, and for kids on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari and I make a pretty decent profit from doing this, only 15 to 20 hours a week. So in today's video, I am gonna go over my June 2020 sales to hopefully give you a better idea of why maybe you should try cross-listing over to a different platform. So I just wanna give you a breakdown of my numbers where I show you my gross number, my cost of goods, any applicable fees and shipping, and then what I actually am able to take home for profit to give you a more realistic and transparent idea of what you could possibly make as well if you were to sell on these three platforms and sell like clothing and shoes and all the other little things that I sell. The opportunities are endless with a resale and I would highly, highly suggest you do your research and start by selling what's in your home. You never know how much money is just sitting around sometimes. But for those that are into their reselling journey a little bit more, you've probably come across um, an issue with trying to keep up with all your numbers, your inventory, how much you're spending for your business expenses, and I just wanted to show you how I how I keep up with my sales, with how I track my inventory, my expenses, and my sales in a spreadsheet. So at the end of this video, um, I'll leave a timestamp here if you just wanna go straight there and just skip over my June sales. But I'm gonna walk you through how I have my spreadsheet set up. It is simple, it's easy to the point, and it gets you what you need without all the fluff. I know some people have the Excel spreadsheet skills and they will be able to recreate that. So. I mean, this is nothing like spectacular and world renowned, like it's just a simple spreadsheet. Um, but if you don't have the time to build it yourself and you just wanna go ahead and start using it, um, I did create an Etsy digital download for you um, for three bucks if you wanna download it and just go ahead and start tracking your inventory and staying a little bit more organized. I have that available for you. If you're interested, the links will be down below. If you do wanna purchase my Excel spreadsheet template for how I track my inventory, expenses, and my sales. So with that said, let's just go ahead and jump into today's video. For the month of June, I was actually really surprised um, with my sales. So as you guys know, over the past few months, um, I've been reporting on my, my gross sales and my net profit, of course, being fully transparent of what is selling for me and what I'm actually taking home. Um, and I've slowly seen an increase and that's where I wanna go because I am slowly trying to implement um, higher end brands, knowing when to pay up for items, and increasing my time a little bit more or just my listings a little bit more. It kind of varies week to week. I'm trying to get a schedule down pat, but we're about to move so I'm like, trying to get into a routine, but I'm like, oh, I know it's all about to be ruined here soon because we're about to move. So regardless, I was really surprised because I thought I was gonna have summer slowdown and I didn't. This has actually been my highest month yet, but I'm not surprised because I am working a little bit more and more every month. So I ended up having 133 transactions across my three platforms. I had 49 on eBay, I had 44 on Poshmark, and 40 on Mercari. So that breaks down to 37% of my sales went on eBay, 33 on Poshmark, and 30% on Mercari. So across all those platforms, my gross sales number was $3,474.12. Not too bad, the number sounds great, but you still have to take into consideration your cost of your goods, so how much you're initially paying for your items, um, and then any applicable platform fees or shipping fees that you may incur. So for me personally, my cost of goods for June was $919.83, which is way higher than what it's been in the past, just because I've really started to analyze the brands that sell best for me and the brands that I wanna put into my closet. So I'm having to source online. So with that, somebody has already provided you their service of finding it for you. So of course you're gonna pay up for it, plus the shipping. So my cost of goods was more. Now we need to get into the fees and shipping from each platform. So for eBay, that includes your eBay fee, which is usually about 10%. Your shipping fee, if you're having your buyer pay for your shipping, technically that's come in as money, so they charge you a fee on it. If you are promoting your items with an ad, that's included in there as well. I'm, at, I'm just at 1% in your PayPal fee. So my eBay fees ended up being $149.88. 
My PayPal fees was $63.03, and everything that I had to pay for shipping ended up being $298.88. However, that number is already technically paid for by the buyer. Um, but I just want to note that here because that is the number that I know that I'm going to have to pay off on my credit card because technically it's come in as a gross sale number. Really, the buyer has already paid for the shipping and now I use that money to pay for the shipping label. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, leave them down below. My Poshmark fees, so Poshmark takes out 20% of your final value fee. Um, it is $231.25 for those 44 transactions. And um, I've really started to not give out shipping discounts because I don't want to give out shipping discounts because of that higher platform fee. Um, so occasionally, very rarely, I will now, but I think only two of my transactions I did, which totaled to $6.36. Actually, I think it was three. That was three of my transactions. Um, so I really didn't give out very much. And same on Mercari. Mercari, um, my fees were $79 which is really great. I love their 10% platform fee. I love Mercari. Mercari is like my favorite. Um, and then the shipping, I'm doing the same thing. I'm not offering free shipping on there anymore. I did a trial a long time ago for like a month um, for the first week, free shipping, and nobody really took advantage of it. So, and people will still always want to talk you down. If somebody wants it, they'll pay for shipping. Like, that's how you are as a consumer. Um, and then I had one item that somebody asked for free shipping and I was okay with it. So that was $4.60. So my total for all of my shipping and all of my fees was $833. So when you break that down, my gross numbers, $3,474.12. My cost of goods was $919.83. So we'll subtract that from the gross number. And then we'll also subtract our fees and shipping of $833. So I am left with my profit, which is $1,721.29, which is great. It's my highest month yet for net profit. I ended up making, if you want to count per transaction, $12.94 for everything that I sold, which is a really good net profit per item. So I know on average that everything that I sell, I will average about around, I've said it in my last video, about $12. This one was actually higher, closer to 13, but I know from me and my numbers based on my spreadsheet that everything that I sell will end up being about $12 profit. So some things are higher, some things are lower. So that's just my personal average and I'm happy with that. I'm going to throw up a graph of my sales on each of the platforms throughout the month. I think it's pretty helpful. There were some days where I only had one sale on one of the platforms, which I'm glad I had that one platform, otherwise I would have had zero. Um, thankfully, I didn't have any days where I had absolutely no sales. I at least had one sale a day. And then there were some days that I had like seven, eight, nine sales across the three platforms. Like pretty crazy because I remember when I first started out, I'm like, I would be lucky if I got one sale a week, maybe two sales a week. And I really didn't understand that the more you list, the more you sell and the more and with anything in life, consistency is key. Yeah, I'm really starting to embrace that. I'm kind of doing a trial run of a certain amount of listings per week and seeing my results on that I am seeing a slow increase so I will happily report on that here maybe within the next month or two so if you haven't subscribed already subscribe um, because I love putting out content like this helping you find out what is essential for your business and how to get you to the goals that you need to get to based on my experience so you know take what you want with a grain of salt I am not a professional, I'm just a normal person like you, and but I think we can learn and grow together, and so that's what I really try to embrace here. So just to highlight my top five highest sales for June, just to give you an idea of some brands that are selling for a really great profit for me right now, especially if you can get it for a low initial cost. Normally I do my top five highest and my top five lowest, but I don't know if that does you any good. So I'm just gonna go over my top five highest. Let me know if that's 
if that works for you down below or if there's something else that you would think would be more interesting. I am wanting to do more weekly or bi-weekly what solds to give you a better idea of what's selling for me throughout the month. So I'm just gonna highlight my top five. So coming in at number five were these Tory Burch crackled leather flat. I initially got them for $2.30. They sold on eBay for $48.40 to include the shipping. So after my fees, my net profit was $32.33. Coming in at number four were these Madewell jeans. I initially bought them for $12.27 and they sold on Mercari for $58 and my net profit on those was $39.93. Coming in at number three was something that I featured in my weekly sold video, which was the bundle of the Lululemon jacket and the Banana Republic hacking jacket. My initial cost of good on those was $7.54 combined. So after my fees, I profited $40.46, so about 20 bucks each. But together, it was a really good net profit. Coming in at number two were these frame denim skinny jeans. They had like this really cool raw shredded hem at the bottom. Um, I did pay up for these. It was an online sourced item. I paid $30 for these. They sold on Poshmark for $100. So after my fees, I profited $50. And coming in at number one, which I was so excited about. If you saw my thrift haul video, I'll link it up. I'll link it up here. I was really excited about these because I knew that they would sell for really good money and they did. These were the Cezanne. I know I'm not saying that right. It's a French brand, really good designer brand. It was their Le Brut Sexy, eco-friendly denim jeans made of organic cotton, just beautifully constructed jeans. Um, I ended up buying them for $42.09 and they ended up selling on eBay for $123.39 to include shipping. I think I sent them an offer for like $115. I initially had them at $125 and they accepted. So after all my fees, I profited $57.42 which, you know, sometimes paying up for something is great because I more than doubled my money on that. If you see that brand in the thrift store, pick it up. Like it is really, really good money. Those are my top five sales for June, 2020. I printed off five rows of my spreadsheet right there. I have had a few questions about how I keep up with all of my information. And this is how for my spreadsheet, because knowing your numbers, you're not gonna wonder how much you made. You're not gonna wonder how much you spent. You're gonna have it all there. So, and it's just a really great place to stay organized and in this world, it's a digital world, so you might as well have it online. So with that said, let's hop over and I'm gonna show you how I go through my inventory with some of my July sales to kind of walk you through it. And if you're interested in building it from what I show you, feel free to do that. It's simple, it's easy. But if you don't have the time for that, I have it listed on Etsy on my husband and I's you know clothing page. I've talked about it before, um, but it's just easy for me to throw it up on there. But the link will be down below. It's three bucks. Um, just to give me a little bit of kickback for my time. So it's there if you're interested, but without further ado, let's get you organized. All right, you guys, so here is my template for my inventory sales and expenses tracker. This is just based on what I personally do. I just made it um, blank for you guys to be able to use it for yourself. Um, so I have three tabs. I have a tab for my inventory, a tab for my sales for 2020, and a tab for my expenses. This is very simple, very easy to do. Um, I do have it down below to keep it as simple and easy for you to understand as possible because you know what? It works for me. It might not work for you, but it's simple enough for me to maneuver through it that it might be as well for you. So um, whenever I have an item that I am currently listing. So this is a part of my listing process. As I have created the title, I will come over here and I will paste it here. So we're gonna pull one from Vendu. All right, so now we're on Vendu. And so I've already listed all of these, but assuming that I am in the middle of listing, this is my process. So I will just get my pictures all set up. And once I have my title made, I will click on it and I will copy it. Control and C on your keyboard. So I'll click Control C. And then I'm gonna go paste it in my inventory. All right, back in the inventory. So we're just gonna come here into my inventory and I'm just gonna paste it. Because later when it sells, all I have to do is click Control F and I'll find the exact inventory item and I can copy it and put it into my sales spreadsheet. All right, so I have my Madewell 
uh, 26 Petite Cali Demi Boot Jeans. I know that I purchased them online on the 26th of June and I did end up paying up for them and I paid $21 and we'll say 25 cents on those. And the platform that I am selling it on, so this is just based on what you have and what you're selling. I had this set up for eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari because that's just what I sell on and most people sell on those platforms. Feel free to get rid of it in the next section. But um, I just do EPM <laughs> um, because it's just a cop out um, to know that I cross listed it via Vindu and I just put EPM. So let's just say I'm still listing. I'm gonna do my Madewell, let's say a jacket. Um, these are not actual ones. Let's just say it's the same order and I paid 15 bucks for that and on all platforms. And let's just say I got some Steve Madden boots. And you know, whatever your title is, be as descriptive as you want. The reason why I just copy and paste my title is because if I have 20 Steve Madden boots, I'll be able to narrow it down by the title and then I can just copy and paste. So we'll say I got those on the same day and I picked those up for 10 bucks. And this is just for my information. So let's just say, so this will all be filled up. I have like 500 rows of these personally. Whenever I want to go and find something, I'll just click Control F, which helps you to find it. Let's say that I wanna find those Madewell Petite Cali Dem Demi Boot jeans, but I can't see all that. There's 500 listings. I don't wanna go through all of that, so I'm just gonna click Find, and I'm gonna write Petite. All right, we got the Petite up there, and it pulled it up. Now let's just say I wanted to find my Steve Madden boots. I would type in boots and it pulls it up. So it'll highlight it. Then you can come across and click Control C. And now it's copied. So we do this when it's sold. So now we'll go over to our sales and we'll be able to paste it in here. So the way that I do it, and I'll go over this while I type in the description. Um, I will click on the item name, name and description because that's where it starts over here. Um, and I'll just click control V and then it will paste it right in there. So now we know that we are now, it's sold, hallelujah. The Steve Madden boots, we know it was purchased here. We know the purchase price was 10 bucks and we're gonna have to fill in the platform once we know the information. So going across the top here, all the applicable information that I use personally when I am tracking all my sales. So. We're just gonna go ahead and say that this was our first sale. Um, I don't have any notes. So let's say that you had a inventory system. That could be a good place to put it in there. I personally sort everything by category, whether it's men, women's, kids, and whether it's a short sleeve shirt or a dress or a sweater or men's shorts or men's jeans. That's how I do my inventory system because I don't have to think about it. The inventory way is already there. So that's just how I do it. It makes it simple for me. It might make it simple for you, but I don't need to add any notes on this one. I know it was my Steve Madden boots and I purchased them here. I purchased them for 10 bucks. Um, and then let's just say they sold on Poshmark. And then they sold, we'll say today, the 5th of July. And they sold for $40. And we'll just put it in there, sale price. And I didn't offer a shipping discount, so I'm gonna put zero and it'll automatically null it out. It's not sold on Mercari, so I'm gonna say zero. My Poshmark fee is 20%, so all you have to do is 40 times 0.2, which is your fee, and it was $8. So I can do eight bucks here, and I know I didn't sell it on eBay, so zero and zero, and it will automatically calculate your net profit for you. Now I have it in there. So now when, I'm, when I've been reading off to you, I know that it sold on Poshmark. I know it sold for 40 bucks. If you want this to have a dollar sign, all you have to do is come up here and click a dollar on it. And yeah, and so we had our $40, it subtracted the eight and the 10, so we were left with 22. And so me personally, I do this throughout the month. Throughout the month, I just go in here and I'm gonna say, okay, now cool, my, my Cali Demi Boot Madewell jeans from earlier sold. So I'm gonna go back here. Oh crap, I forgot that I forgot to delete this. It's no longer in my inventory. So just highlight it, click the delete button. And then if let's just say there was more down here, let's say item one, item 17, whatever, Ralph Lauren shirt, 
whatever. And that, those were the Steve Madden boots. 6, 26, 26, 20, 10, 8 p.m. Okay, let's just say that, okay, it was in the middle of all these bunch of items. So you're just gonna highlight it, click delete, and then once it's deleted and you wanna get rid of that row, just right click it, click delete, and click the entire row. And now it just boots it up. So as you go along, you'll be able to see how many items are actually active in your inventory. Assuming that everything has been listed. Okay, so now cool, my Demi boots have been sold. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come over to my sales and I'm gonna paste it starting here in the item description. And let's say that those sold on Mercari and they sold today. And let's say that they sold for $80 and no shipping fee, but Mercari is a 10% platform fee, so I know that that's $8, nothing for Poshmark, nothing for eBay, nothing for PayPal. Now I know that I profited $50.75 on those Madewell jeans. So assuming that you're building all of this up, down here, this is just how I like to set it up. You could do a spreadsheet like this for every month and just have it broken up all the way down at the bottom. You could say, boom, June, boom, July, and then keep adding them in, adding them in, adding them in. But I don't like to do that. So I'm gonna come back down here and delete them. I like having it all on one sheet so that way when tax time comes, I'll be able to go all the way to the bottom and we have our totals. So this way I know so far for the entire year, based on my two sales, I have spent $31.25 for my goods. And I have had a gross sale number of $120. I spent nothing on shipping. My entire year of Mercari sales are there, or my Mercari fees, excuse me. My Poshmark fees, my eBay, PayPal, net profit. You get the idea. Um, but I personally just gray it out between each month, just one row. And then I come over here and do month one. So we'll just say, so this was um, July, cause they all sold in July. And so far, and I just leave all these blank. There's nothing, there's no method to this madness. I just leave it blank. And then I tally up all of my net profit for the entire month. So let's just say that you wanted to sell more than all of these items. So let's see how many numbers this is. So you can always drag this little square all the way down to the bottom and fill series. So that was 14 items. Let's say, um, delete this last one and you wanted to add in five more. You can go to control plus mark and then click entire row. And now you got another one. So let's just say you wanted to do that a few more times because you need more space for July. Cool. All right, but now you have these blank. Just to get the exact same equation in from the last ones, you'll click this, um, you'll click the one above it with the little square, drag it down, and then that equation is in there. So as you type in your information across, um, it will fill it in. So I will, I personally just add in the item number every time. Um, you really don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just an interesting thing to know how many items are selling. Let's just add in a few more things like, um, Ralph Lauren jeans. Let's say we bought them back in February. We bought them for $2. We bought, we sold them on eBay. They sold today. Wow. That took forever to sell. Oops. 7, 5, 2020. They sold for a whole whopping 15 bucks. Um, the shipping, since it was on eBay, we did have to pay for. So let's Say they were jeans, you had to use a padded flat rate. My price is $7.52 on those. Nothing on Mercari, nothing on Poshmark. My eBay fees, it's about 10%. Plus my ad, let's say it wasn't sold via an ad, so we'll just say a dollar, you know, 75. You can find this number in your account details. I'm just completely making this up. And PayPal, whatever, it was a, a dollar. Okay, cool, I net profited $2.73, cool but it added it up here for you. But yeah, you get the idea. You just add them in, and then if you need more before you get to the bottom, just add some more. We'll just say we wanted to do it here. We'll do Control Plus, entire row, and you added another row. You might have to do this a few times. Cool, we added a few more, so we'll click maybe this bottom one, and we'll drag it up, and now your equation is already there, ready for you. And then this number will automatically update for your last row. So this is just, summing up 
the entire of your net profits. Um, and then you'll do the exact same thing for the next month. And then, you know, whatever, let's see, we'll come down to here and we'll do fill series. So that was left at 23. Make sure you skip over. Now we'll start at 24. And now we're into August. So we'll just make this one August. We'll say that I sold some Ugg boots, whatever my title was. Hopefully it's a little bit more in depth to make it easier for you. Let's say I bought those back on the 1st of April and I bought them for $3. I sold them on, yeah, we'll just say eBay. I sold them today or let's see, this is supposed to be August. We'll say August 1st. Um, and then I sold them for, I don't know, what do you think? 78.40, sure. And my shipping fee was nine bucks. And nothing on Mercari, nothing on Poshmark, eBay. I ended up having to spend $8.32 on fees and my PayPal was $2.25. Cool. All right, so that's your net profit for that. Takes um, your sale price, subtracts all your shipping and your fees and your cost of good, and that's what your net is. And then it tallies it up for August for you there. And then same thing, like with July, you need to add some more rows. Add them down here. Okay, we have some blank stuff, so we're just gonna fill in that equation so we don't have to do it for everyone. And you're good to go, ready for the rest of August. So now here's the situation. Now we're getting into September. My template doesn't have the next month available for you. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's just go ahead and enter in a few more just to give us some working space so you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna create this last one as our gray bar. So we're gonna delete that. We're gonna go all the way across. Actually, we're gonna do it the one above it so we can have some room left over. So we're gonna go to this one. We are going to gray it out, September. And then we are going to do the sum of those items. Add in my September sales. So let's just say I'm on whatever, I'm in 45. That's not right, but whatever. Um, and I sold some Lulu Lemon Align pants. I bought them on the 1st of July, 2020. I bought them for 20 bucks and I sold them on Mercari. I sold them September 1st and we sold them for, I don't know, let's say 70 bucks. So, and we didn't pay anything towards shipping. We paid $7 for Mercari fees because it's 10%. Nothing Poshmark, nothing eBay, nothing PayPal. And there we are, our $43 for September. Now let's say you want to go over to October and you only have this little itty bitty line down here. That's okay, just do your control plus, and you're gonna do your entire row. Uh-oh, now we have an issue. It's taken the above row, so that's fine. We're just gonna go ahead and put no fill on that and try again. So we're gonna go back down here, control plus, entire row, there we go. So now we're just gonna give us a little bit of room to work with. And we're gonna go ahead and bring this straight down but I don't want it here. Um, so I'm just gonna move that back over for my gray. This is just helps to separate it for me in my mind. And we need to create October. So we're just gonna go across. You don't have to do gray. You can change all these colors as much as you want. Um, do October. We're going to do the equal sign, the sum parentheses, and then whatever we're gonna use for October. And then as you add in more of the rows for October, it will automatically include that in the sum. And we'll just get that ready for October. And so now you can see it's from 47 all the way down to 55 again over here. And it's already just set up for the end of the year. Your purchase price is here. It was the sum of everything there you get the idea of the total for the entire year. 
and that's how I do my spreadsheet. At the end of the day, you still have to keep up with your own numbers. You have to keep up with your titles. You need to keep up what you're selling because you are making income. You're gonna have to report it to the IRS. So just make a habit of it. I do this every Sunday because sometimes it might get overwhelming. You might be able to do this more every day as you make your sales. It used to be like that for me because I can manage it. But now I have to set up one day to do my bookkeeping. And that's Sunday. Sunday, I just do my bookkeeping for everything for the past week. And I just knock it all out. Um, so this is just how I do my sales spreadsheet. And whatever has already sold, remember, I'll come back over here to my inventory and delete it once it's sold. And I can right click and delete that row. So that way it will correctly adjust how many items I have available back to my sales let's just say you wanted to figure out your gross sales completely for july and you're doing this method of using the entire year but you only want to figure out what you got did for july because you want to do a youtube video on it so just come over here to your gross sales and you'll end up highlighting let's just assume that all of these are uh filled up but you would just highlight everything from your gross sales and boom down here in the green that will be your total number. Same thing if you wanna, this is how I tally up. How much did I actually spend on Mercari fees? I will just come down here, highlight all of them, assuming everything is already filled up, um, and I'll say boom, right here. Eight bucks is what I spent on Mercari fees for July. Also, we'll know how much my purchase price is and when I bought it with my expense spreadsheet. So this is pretty simple. I just keep up with everything over here. So I know that on the 26th, of June, I purchased stuff, let's say on Mercari sourcing, let's say Mercari sourcing, and I bought Steve Madden boots, and I bought Madewell jeans, and I bought earrings, belts, whatever. Whatever you get, put in your Goodwill, put in whatever, and then whatever you end up spending for the entire amount. Let's just say I spent $84.25 for that entire order for everything. Cool, it added it up all the way down here for me and you just keep up with that throughout the year. So you know that on July 1st, you ended up spending 20 bucks for your Vindu subscription. Um, we'll just say our monthly subscription for cross-listing. And it was 19.99. It's currently what I have right now. But if you want 25% off your first month, I have a link down below, you can do that as well. I just really love their service, it makes my life easier. But this is just how I personally keep up with all my business expenses. When I need to buy more shipping supplies, I need to go to Walmart and I need to buy some more tape. I'm gonna put in here, okay, today I went to Walmart and I bought some tape and it was $5.70. Cool. Now I'm keeping up with the entire year of how much I'm putting towards my business. Um, you can break this up as much as you want, but this is really simple, easy, a good way to keep up with everything. A lot of my stuff, since I am sourcing online, I have digital receipts of everything. You might want to consider doing photocopies of your receipts if you have if that helps you a little bit more. Um, at the end of the week, if you're doing your bookkeeping, you could just pull um, from a bin of receipts that you've kept from the week of sourcing and put it in here just so you have two places where you can reference. And yeah, that's what I use. So when I am when I have listed something, I put it in my, into my inventory. I quickly put in the purchase date and I put in my purchase price and the platform that I put it on. I cross list, I do EPM um, and I could come over here and let's say I bought whatever, 10 items and it was 84.25. I'll just pull up my calculator real quick. 84.25 divided by 10 items. I know it was $8.42 per item. So, okay, I was wrong. We'll just say 8.42 per item. Cool. But this is my a part of my listing process. So anyways, that is how I do my spreadsheet. It's pretty simple. I, I mean, it can get confusing at first if you're new to Excel, but it's very basic equations. You could really do this yourself, but I know a lot of people don't have the time, so I am just gonna include the link where you can purchase it on Etsy, three bucks. Um, it's just a kickback to me for making it for you and showing you this step-by-step -step video of how I work through it. Hopefully you find it helpful. Hopefully it can get you organized and get you onto the path of knowing where your money is going, how much net profit you're actually making and how much you might be spending towards fees. The key to reselling is knowing your money. This is just a very simple way 
quick, easy, it works. It just makes my life easier. Anyways, that about wraps it up for today's video, guys. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know how your June sales went down below and make sure you subscribe. I am putting out two videos a week right now on Mondays and Thursdays, and I am looking to put out a little bit more content for you in the near future. So subscribe and you will find out when I do do that. And I appreciate you guys. I really, really do appreciate everybody coming back here, supporting and leaving comments. Um, it really means a lot to me because I wanted to do YouTube for a long time. I feel passionate about helping people find what is essential to them for their lives and we are all on this journey together and if you would like to help find the essentials make sure you subscribe down below and i will help you find those we have lots of conversations here to help you do that so i would love to have you join the family make sure you like on your way out because it will boost me a little bit in the algorithm and push this video out to people that could also find it helpful and we all wanna to win together, right? I love you guys. I hope you have a phenomenal week. Stay safe and well, and I will catch you next time. All right, bye.